Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Although the church in France is battling Christophobic attacks and rampant de-Christianisation of society, there is a glimmer of hope. A host of new churches are being built in several cities across the country to accommodate the burgeoning number of believers. On January the 16th in Oisin le Bretonneau in the Diocese of Versailles, the foundation stone of a new church dedicated to Saint Joseph was laid in the presence of Bishop Luc Crepy. Once it is completed next year, the new church will accommodate 800 worshippers at a time. Another church will be constructed in the city of Ceris, and this too will allow 900 believers to attend Mass at a time. The growing number of Catholics in the city of Shell has prompted the authorities to demolish a small chapel dedicated to Saint Mathilde and build a much larger church on its site that can seat 800 people. In the Diocese of Saint-Denis, another new church is coming up and it is dedicated to St John the 23rd. These are in addition to renovation work being carried out in several churches. Five American senators have sent a letter to US Ambassador for International Religious Freedom Rashad Hussein, urging his office to observe the lawsuit against two Christians in Finland who have been charged with hate speech. Senators Marco Rubio, Josh Hawley, James Lankford, Jim Inhofe and Mike Braun said in their letter that the application of current Finnish law is tantamount to a secular blasphemy law. Finnish courts are hearing charges against former Interior Minister Paivi Rasanen and Bishop Johanna Poyola of the Finnish Evangelical Lutheran Church for alleged hate crimes based on their statements citing biblical views of morality. The senators said that the statements of the two accused reflect a conception of marriage and sexuality upheld by not just millions of Christians, but Muslims and Jews too around the world. They also added that all people have a fundamental right to freedom of religion and speech and that this should be upheld. Among a series of announcements made by the Vatican on Tuesday is the appointment of an auxiliary for the Archdiocese of New York, who will be the youngest bishop in the country. 45-year-old Father Joseph S. Bailat, who hails from the Bronx and is known for his flair for rap music, has been appointed as auxiliary bishop. Currently serving as the vicar of St. Anthony of Padua Parish, Father S. Bailat will receive episcopal consecration on March the 1st, along with Father John Bonici, who too has been elevated as auxiliary bishop. Father Espelat is popular known as Father J Online and he has served as the Director of Youth Ministry and the Vicar of St Peter's Parish in Yonkers and Our Lady Queen of Martyrs Parish in Manhattan. He was ordained a priest in 2003. Ad Multosanos to the new bishops. In Pakistan, a group of armed men desecrated a Catholic church and committed sacrilege by scattering the sacred hosts. The armed men attacked the St. Camillus de Lelis church in the town of Okara, around 100 kilometres away from Faisalabad, on January the 23rd. They tied up the sacristan before committing the sacrilege. They also burnt him and prayer books. Father Khalid Rashid Asi, the director of the Catholic Church's National Justice and Peace Commission, lodged a complaint with the police and sought a detailed probe. The priest also appealed to believers to remain calm and pray for peace and unity of the community. Christians face persecution in Muslim-majority Pakistan, with there recently having been attacks on churches and church buildings. In the United States, Bishop David Malloy of Rockford, who is also the chairman of the US Conference of Catholic Bishops Committee on International Justice and Peace, has come out with a statement appealing to all leaders to respect the territorial integrity and independence of Ukraine as tensions brew with neighbouring Russia. This comes in the wake of a massive build-up of troops and weapons by Russia near the Ukrainian border. The bishop urged both sides to engage in constructive dialogue and peacefully resolve the conflict that could impact the lives of over 40 million million people in Ukraine. On Monday, the Catholic prelates of Ukraine and Poland had appealed to the global community to take action to defuse the crisis. It is in response to their appeal that Bishop Malloy urged people of goodwill and all the faithful to pray for Ukrainians. In Sri Lanka, the Archbishop of Colombo, Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit, has said that the church in the country is left with no option but to appeal to the international community for help in its efforts to seek justice for the victims of the 2019 
Easter Sunday bomb attacks. During an online forum on January the 24th, the top prelates said they have no option but to seek international help, as the legal system under the Attorney General did not consider recommendations made by the Commission probing the attacks. In April of last year, the Cardinal had hinted at approaching the United Nations, as well as nations with influence. Suicide bombers belonging to the National Tawhid Jamaat, a local Islamist outfit, are believed to be behind the blast that took place in three churches and three luxury hotels on Easter Sunday in 2019, killing 269 people, including 37 foreign nationals, and leaving 500 injured. Nigeria has once again witnessed scenes of violence, with several Christians being killed by Boko Haram militants in Borno State, with 17 girls also being abducted. The attack took place on January the 20th in the northern state, and there are reports that two churches and two houses were also torched by the Islamist militants. News reports say that the militants attacked the Pemi community in the Chubok region, where the Islamist group's decade-long fight against the federal government has been centred. In a statement, the militants claimed responsibility for the attack and abduction. In 2014, about 300 schoolchildren were kidnapped by Boko Haram, of which more than 100 are yet to be reunited with their families. The jihadist insurgency in northern Nigeria has claimed the lives of over 40,000 people and has placed over 2 million others. Global Catholic charity Aid to the Church in Need has appealed to the international community to observe February the 1st as a day of prayer for the people in Myanmar, as it marks the first anniversary of the military coup in the country. Ever since the military took power in Myanmar, there have been incessant peaceful protests that have been brutally dealt with by the soldiers. So far, 1,500 protesters have been killed and thousands have been incarcerated. Joining the January the 14th appeal of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Myanmar, the day of prayer is a sign of solidarity and fraternity with the local church. The Catholic prelates of the Buddhist-majority nation had sought the fellowship of the Universal Church to seek support for suffering people in Myanmar. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.